I love being a failure. Hmm. Me, JT, I love being a failure. Now, wait before you get mad at this topic and be like, what in the world is JT talking about? You know, you shouldn't call yourself a failure. You shouldn't say things like that. It might, you know, teach somebody the wrong way. Well, after looking at this video, you may have a different outlook on what I mean about failure. And it's going to be a few people that's going to truly catch this and understand what I mean. This is actually a video response back to you, keyboard man. You said, JT, how did you get so good on the piano? You didn't get discouraged. You didn't give out. You didn't go to school. You didn't got a degree. Well, little brother, let me tell you something, keyboard man. This video, I'm, in this video, what I'm about to say is going to be way past talking about playing the piano. Failure is a part of being successful. It comes along with it. That's why I'm going to use this title, I Love Being a Failure. Because if you catch what I'm saying, that's how I am the man I am today. But of course, I have to acknowledge the Holy Spirit first. I never gave up in nothing in life. I always loved the challenge. When people told me, brother keyboard man, I couldn't do something, I prove you wrong. I can do it. Because as the Bible teaches me, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things, not some things, not a few things. And I believe when I pray on it, if it's in his will, I got to fail in order to be successful with it. I'm going to get real with you in this video. First of all, like you're talking about the piano, all gifts come from above. Man or mankind did not give me this gift. Now, you can be around people in this life that can help you know, play an impact on bringing your gift out. But that gift already came from above. All glory to the most high. And see, I am a very, very determined person. And here's the other key. I'm fearless. Most people I know fear things. They walk around in doubt. But they say they have faith. But faith and fear don't mix. So I'm fearless, which means I'm not scared to fail in life. Because once again, in order to move forward and succeed, I have to be willing to fail. But most people, when they fail, they quit. They give up. How many nights, how many days, how many endless hours of being on that piano with no schooling? Mm. Did I get mad, frustrated a lot of times? Yes, that comes with it. But I kept telling myself, I'm going to get it. Because it was in me. I started off playing drums. And even my band, te my band teacher back in the day, Mr. Leron Wilson, he said, Dro, your hands are too small to play the piano. It's not for you. Your hands, your fingers, it's too small. You can't form the cards right. And even in elementary school, every day, I would sneak into the auditorium room, sneak into the piano room, get on the piano. Got busted a few times. Teachers got mad at me. Get out of here, boy. But I never stopped. I would stay up all night learning, learning, learning. Failing, failing, failing. Trying to succeed on the keyboard. See, I was willing to fail every chance I got on it. And the more and more I failed at trying to learn it, the more things I learned. One, one dude told me, man, 
you need a plan B. So I tell people all the time, I don't believe in plan B because my plan B is going to tell my plan A is not going to make it. And so many people don't want you to succeed in this life and they speak things on you. But I don't have a plan B. If I would have had a plan B, I would have gave up on the piano completely. That's why the Most High tells us in the Bible that we plan, but he orders our steps. And moving with these steps, I knew that I was going to fail more and more and more. That's why I trust the Holy Spirit. My process is the Holy Spirit. If I focus on the process, I don't have to worry about the results. So that's that's to answer your question about the piano. Even when I had that stroke in 2016, the devil wanted me to quit playing the piano. Oh, you can't play for show sure now because you only got your right hand working. Never stop me. I told my left hand, you better get it right and come on back with it because right hand ain't going to leave you. That's my mindset. I learned how to still play the piano with one hand and using that sustain pedal. Anybody around you will tell me, and a nickname me the one hand bandit. Because even in my sickness going down, I didn't give up. See, it's not the person who tries that fails. It's the person who never tries at all. And you're going to get to the point in your life where you pass trying. And you're going to get it done. But if you got that giving up mentality, what is that going to do for you? Hmm. What has quitting ever done for anybody? I learned how to be very successful at doing things by failing. And what really got me to the way I am too, of course, the Holy Spirit. But I got tired of depending on people. You know, if you're anything like me, you would help so many people, but you couldn't get those same results. That's why people will let you down. Mankind will fail you. and won't even come back. I learned how to be patient. Even back in the day when I was crazy about working on cars, Brother Amos James, when I used to be with my man, Guy Hancock, on Saturdays especially, sometimes during the week, but mostly Saturdays, I would drive to the wrecking yard where all the broke down cars sitting up with motors in them. And I would go out there and spend hours getting up under them cars, learning how to take the transmission out, put it back in. I didn't care about making no money. I, I, I was learning. And I said, I'm, if I do this, then I'll learn how to do my own motors, learn how to do my own brakes, learn how to put my own alternators in. Of course, my old man used to be a hell of a mechanic. My uncle's mechanics. I hung around a lot of mechanics growing up. Shade tree mechanics, as old school would say. I learned a lot from shade tree mechanics. And I remember when my, when my um, Transmission went out of my old Lincoln Town car. I think that was a 1990 town car. I went out there to that wrecking yard, spent so much time, take that draft shaft, draft shaft off, but Amos. See what all I got to disconnect. See, back in the day, they would put the transmissions on their chest. They didn't use no transmission jack. Your chest was the jack. And I would sit out there, learn how to do it. I bought my transmission, brought it home, put it in the car, failed at it. <laughs> Had everything right, except for one thing. And on them Fords, you didn't have that flywheel and that talking bread lined up right. You got to come back down, start all the way over. Oh, I was pissed off. Because I failed at it. And I was so pissed off. I'm just making the point. 
I went right back out to Fred about it. They sold me the wrong one. <laughs> and I was so pissed off, I went back and got the right one. Of course, I had to take it back out. It fitted just in line up right. That next day, I went right back up, 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 up under my car. Put that transmission right back in, the new one. And I learned what and what not to do. I've learned how to do so many different things by practicing and failing. And my question to you is, are you willing to be a failure so you can continue to be successful? successful? To be successful. See, I look at failure as a, a, a great opportunity. Because if I didn't get it right, that first time, that second time, that third time, or how many times, I got another chance to rethink what I'm doing. We evaluate it. And then you know what that's going to make me do? Come back 10 times harder. See, that's what I'm saying, little brother. This is way past talking about playing the piano. You apply this with your life. I will fail on purpose a lot of times. But even in this walk, how many times do we fail? Hmm. Failure also showed me where I shouldn't be. Hmm. But when you fail, you got another chance to get it right. You got another shot at it. You know, back in the day, they, the old folks would tell us, or even some of your teachers at school, they would tell us, I forgot who uh, came out with this quote, but they would say, aim for the moon. Shoot for the moon. Because if you miss, you may hit a star. When I was little, I used to say, what the hell does that mean? I'm trying to pull out my heart to you. You sitting there talking about the moon and the stars, but I got it now. I understood it when I got older. I understand it. Aim for the moon. Because if you miss, you may hit a star. That's why I aim for the Holy Spirit every day. Every day he allows me to wake up. Knowing I got shortcomings and, and I might fail at this and fail at that. But knowing that if I don't give up, if I faint not, as Brother Anthony was reading them scriptures last night. Oh, teach Holy Spirit. Bless you, Brother All. Powerful live chat. Bless all of y'all lives on that live chat last night. And if I don't, Proverbs 3, if I don't lean into my own understanding, I keep aiming for the Holy Spirit because my goal is heaven. See, I'm shooting at eternal life, and I'm going to fail at doing it. But it ain't about how I fall. It's about how I get back up after I fall. And I ain't talking about will willfully sinning. Some of y'all remember old baseball player known as Babe Ruth. Catch where I'm about to go with this. Babe Ruth was known for hitting all them home runs. If I remember correctly, Babe Ruth hit about 714 home runs. But what a lot of people never told you was that, that, that Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times. And then he walked on base 2,062 times. But see, but he was willing to strike out. If he was not willing to strike out, he wouldn't have became Babe Ruth, hitting them 714 home runs. So he actually struck out and he walked on base more than the home runs that he hit. How many times have we struck out in life? Hmm. This is why it's so important not to operate in fear. When you understand that failure is a part of being successful, then you be willing to fail. You got to be willing to fail. And you cannot operate in fear. Because once again, fear and faith does not mix. Failure is a part of success. See, when I look at everything I failed at, 
it wasn't so much of me failing. I was gaining. Too many people in this life, they don't, they, they, they don't want to stand this, and they want things to be handed to them. They want things the easy way. They don't want to struggle. That's why I love talking about a diamond. What makes a diamond? Time and pressure. With this failure comes pressure. Pressure will make a pipe bust. We all deal with pressure. We all deal with failure. But how are you moving on? Hmm. I'm reminded of, of old weeping prophet by the name of Jeremiah. When you get around Jeremiah um, chapter 8 verse 4. Jeremiah, say this to the people of Judah. This is what the Most High says. You know if a man falls down, he gets up again. And if that man goes the wrong way, he turns around and come back. I'm reminded uh, of, of teach Holy Spirit, Proverbs 24 and 16. He said, if the righteous may, the righteous may fall seven times, but still get up. But the wicked will stumble into trouble. I fell way more times than seven. But I've got up 20. <laughs> The most high Yah uses our failure to make the best out of us. Because he saw the best in me. <laughs> when everybody else around me could only see the worst in me. He takes that failure. He takes those shortcomings. He takes us and he molds us into something so precious. And then, next thing you know, you on fire for the Holy Spirit. You done failed so many times. You understand now that it's a part of succeeding. So don't look at this title and, and, and take this title the wrong way. Because if you know a little something about what I'm talking about and what you have went through, you know for a fact that failure brought the best out of you with the Holy Spirit. You learned that what you went through made you stronger. Old folk would say, anything don't kill me or make me better. Teach Holy Spirit. That's why I love listening to people who know something about failure. But being failure, be excuse me, failing at things and being fearless is what made me who I am. And when I'm saying making who I am, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing it's the Holy Spirit that made me who and what I am. Because the Holy Spirit that I serve is not a failure. At all. The other day, my beautiful sister Samika on the live chat said something that hit me hard. And if you're watching, Samika, love you, my sister. I'm always listening. Sometimes y'all think I'm not listening. I hear everything. But Samika was, was, was going on in the live chat talking about how the people around her, family, kin folks, wanted her to do what they wanted her to do. Wanted her to go to school, wanted her to do this, wanted her to do that. You become this. We want you to, to be this. But somebody said, that's what y'all want me to do. But I got my own way that I want to go. She took all the negative that was spoken against her and used it as positive. Teach on the spirit. That's why I ain't about what your kin folks want for you. It's about what y'all want for you. And that's off to you, Sir Michael, for saying that. You got kin folks in this life that will talk down on you. You got people in this life who are scared. You're going to go higher than them. You familiar with the old crab in the, in the bucket? How once the crab is, is, is trying to climb up to get to the top. The other crowds pull them right back down. You ain't going nowhere. You're standing here with us. But I got a question for you. Is it so much of that the other crowds don't want that crowd to make it to the top? Or is it is, is it that the water is way too hot for them? Is it the heat? Hmm. 
and they all trying to go at one time. Somebody will catch that later. That's something to think about. We all are trying to climb to the top. And climbing to the top, you're going to leave some folks behind. Because if you're not willing to leave them ones behind who don't want to really go to the top, no way. The top I'm talking about now is eternal life. While I'm climbing for my eternal life, I can't let nobody stop me. I can't sit up and worry about you don't want to go or you 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 got these excuses and you want to do this, you want to do that. I got to work out my own salvation. I'm climbing, Holy Spirit. And climbing, I'm going to fail. I might even get halfway and fall down. But Holy Spirit said, I got you. So many people live their life through others. Basing their lifestyle off somebody else. Well, you're going to also have people disappoint the head out of you in this life. You're going to have people make so many promises to you and they are not going to fall through with it. They will let you down. But see, one thing about me, I will not accept defeat. I can't quit. You only run out of options when you stop looking for an option. With the Holy Spirit, there's always a way. He always got a ram in the bush. But I won't accept defeat. That's why the devil come at me so hard, constantly. The devil always riding and coming at me, riding my way. Here he come again. And he always got to keep going and say, I just can't get JT. The devil say, the more I come at you, JT, the more and more you keep moving higher toward the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because the most High have allowed Satan to buffet me, to buffet you, just like Paul said. A messenger of Satan came to buffer you and I. We all got a thorn in our flesh. Teach Holy Spirit. Oh, I pray this is helping somebody. But he said, my grace is sufficient. I'm reminded of that grace. Because he could have, what we say last night, Brother Hall, he could have took his hands off us a long time ago. But we don't serve a failure. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to fail in order to succeed? I remember years ago, and I'm going to try to wrap this video up. Round on, on, on Thrush Street. My old, my old man, Mr. Kelly, he passed away. I was spending so much time with that old man. I was showing him how to play the keyboard. And he would teach me so many things about the yard. Gardening and, and, and you know, lawn being this lawn service, and I miss him dearly. And one time his lawnmower broke, he was about to throw it in the trash. And, and boy, that's how he would talk. Boy, don't that, 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 that lawnmower ain't it, it's done, it's on his last leg. He just throw it out there on the curb. I said, No, it's still life in this lawnmower, Mr. Kevin. Let me work on it. He would always call me son. Well, son, go right on ahead, son. But I'm telling you, son, you're just wasting your time. You're still talking about failure. I said, give me that lawnmower. I stayed on that lawnmower about six hours. I took off everything I could think of. My twin brother, the same way when it comes to working on lawnmowers and, and, and lawn equipment. It took me six hours, and, and I was frustrated. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, come look at me. Give me some water. Boy, I tell you, leave it alone. He said, give up on it, son. You can't fix it. He said, I done watched you try at least 50 things, and that thing still won't start. He said, you ain't learned your lesson yet. You, you ain't accomplished nothing, son. Just give up. So that may be true, Mr. Kevin. I've tried 50 things. But you know what I told them, brothers and sisters? You know, I said, well, you know what, Mr. K? I found 50 things that didn't work. And I'm still not going to give up. And the next day, 
I went back over there early in the morning. I said, it's something I, I didn't think to try. And I figured it out. And I fixed it. Pulled the string. Lomo crunk up. Ran like it ain't never ran before. He heard the loud Lomo. He came outside. He said, boy, what the hell you done did? Just like that. You know, old folk. He said, you learned something, didn't you? I said, yeah. I said, I told you I was going to fix it. But if I wasn't willing to fail, I wouldn't have fixed that old Lomo. I said, see, you gave up on me, Mr. K. He was laughing. I said, I was willing to fail in order to succeed with this lawnmower. Now, look at our lives. Look at the pain and misery that we go through. See, I've learned with failure. Mm, I'm trying to quit, but this is, oh, this is powerful. I look at all the failure in life and the pain that it brought. Pain don't feel good. But I learned in my life that pain, that pain is only temporary. It was temporary. But quitting lasts forever. That's why I don't believe in suicide. That's quitting. I talked about that last night when that young woman, when that young sister took herself out because she said she didn't feel God no more. That still bothers me. Not just her, but so many. I don't feel connected to God, and I'm going to go ahead and end my life. I'm going to be at peace. You ain't at peace. That's quitting. See, the hard, the hard tough job is, 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 is being alive, standing here, dealing with this stuff in this world. Taking all the, bump, the bumps and the bruises that come with it. See, for me, I take the pain. Even what is that? Hebrews 5 and 8 said that Yahshua learned obedience through his suffering. You're going to suffer. You're going to feel that pain. The heat going to be turned up in your life. You're going to fail. All but with the Holy Spirit, he will bring you out. Failure has brought the best out of a lot of us. That's why I always like to look at Babe Ruth once again as I close. He failed all those times, striking out to make them 714 home runs. Make sure this thing is still on. Oh, okay. I thought it. I thought it shut off for me, but I'm about to end anyway. I have to. I have to keep track of this thing, Barkers. I've. I've been having so many issues just trying to. Um. Just trying to record now, because the devil wants me to give up. See, the devil knows I'm good at failing, <laughs> and, and I use those lessons I learned through my falling. And when I get up, it's on. As Brother Steve say, what it do though? I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Steve before I close out. Steve, you looking? Hey, 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 hey! Check this out. Check this out, Brother Steve. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. You ready for the word? Here we go. Family, family. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Failure. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Here we go. Failure. Failure. Hey, hey, check this out. I'm going to bring it on home. Failure, Brother Steve. Is a part of being successful. 
Shade is out, though. Hey, 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 here we go, Steve. Hey, hey, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Steve. Here we go. Failure brought out the best in us. Hey, family, if you ain't failed, you ain't really went, you ain't really went, went through nothing. Now, let me get back in my JT boss. Big shout out to my brother, Steve. And I know you know something about failing. So this video is not for everybody to understand. But those who have learned from failing, you know what I'm talking about. Because when you keep moving on, as Paul say, let me press toward the mark, toward the prize of the higher calling. How, how can you how can you press on without failure being a process? How can you have a testimony without a test? And in your tests, you will fail, but you learn while you're falling. Testimony. So many great people in the Bible failed. They didn't get it right the first time, second time. I didn't, you didn't either. And with that being said, I love y'all. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Shalom. Y'all take care now.